Hey guys, it's Bart. And Dave. It's been a really busy week here. We've got some paintings on the walls. They're beautiful. It's going well. Also, Sloane has gotten her nap game on. So she's been napping multiple times a day. Yes. Yeah, right? Awesome. And on top of it, I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but she's been a lot more vocal. So she is speaking in all kinds of tongues and gibberish. Yeah, it's almost like she's got her own secret language. Wop on a whippy! So cute, so cute. Really cute. Also, I spoke at a conference last week. Do you want to talk about it, Dave? Yeah, so it's uh, an organization called Men Having Babies. And uh, it's actually kind of amazing what they do. They put on these conferences and invite all these vendors with different IVF, fertility agencies, and different organizations. And these organizations pay to be a part of this. And they use the proceeds from those conferences to actually help about a dozen families a year who otherwise wouldn't necessarily be able to pay the full cost of adoption or surrogacy. Uh, be able to start their families. So kind of this amazing, amazing organization. And yeah, they invited Bart to uh, come and speak. And you know, we thought it was gonna be a really small thing, just 20 people huddled in a windowless room, but it was actually like a major event, like all these signs and so many people, like probably a couple hundred people that attended this. It's an awesome way to do a crash course in starting your family. So I was on this panel and there were five of us, right? Yeah. So there was Myself, there was another um, parent who had, a, I think, a one-year-old right next to me. And then there were uh, two surrogates, former surrogates, and one egg donor. So it was a nice array of all different people who kind of make this, this process possible. Yeah, and uh, it was really beautiful just hearing everybody's stories, you know, across the different spe you know, spectrum. But one of the things that was very, very fascinating to us was the egg donor was actually uh, what's known as a known egg donor, which means that she actually has a relationship with all the families that used her eggs. And so, you know, through the years, she actually had about a dozen children that were born through her egg donations. And she met all of them. She traveled to Israel to meet the family there. And they were even, like, crazily enough, planning this family reunion where all of these children that were the product of her egg donations were going to get together and, and meet each other. Yeah. So if you remember back to one of our first episodes, we started talking about picking your egg donor. Yep. Right? And one thing, we talked about a lot of different criteria, but one thing actually that we just assumed was by default was that you wouldn't have a relationship with your egg donor. Yeah. But actually, that's just the majority of egg donors and there's some egg donors who actually do want to know who that child ends up becoming. Yeah, like that woman on the panel. So it got us thinking about the pros and cons of anonymous versus known egg donors. And so when it comes to known egg donors, this is Judy. Judy. Yeah. Judge Judy. Judge no, Judy. Not Judge Judy. Her eggs would be too old. I mean, we love her as a, as a TV Judge personality, Judy. but not necessarily somebody you'd want as your, your egg donor. But yeah, when it comes to known egg donors, um, obviously some of the benefits are you, know, you have a relationship with them. So you're getting more information than what you would just be able to glean from an online profile. You know, often known egg donors are relatives, you know, maybe somebody's sister or close friends. And so they're often willing to give you their eggs for free, which is obviously, you know, a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, but some of the cons are, you know, they're just not, if you don't have, you know, family member or friend who's gonna give you eggs. Uh, the percentage of egg donors that wanna be known is relatively small, so you don't have as big of a selection. Uh, not too many Judy's out there. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is that, you know, with a known egg donor, uh, you know, you do know the person who's contributed 50% of their DNA and obviously it depends on the couple and you know, the type of relationship you want with all the different stakeholders that are part of your journey. But, you know, there are couples that might not be comfortable with, you know, that woman being a part of their life and, you know, their child's life as they, as they get older. So with anonymous egg donors, just like number four, five, six, eight, one of the pros is you have a wider selection of looking for maybe the qualities or aspects of an egg that you really care about. Uh, additionally, there is that sense of distance between you and the egg donor. So let's say you don't feel completely keen on having the egg donor be a part of your life going forward in your child's life. That's something that's a benefit from that pro program. But, you know, as you can imagine, it's more costly because this is not your sister or your best friend's roommate's cousin's girlfriend. So, yeah. because of that, um, that's another aspect. Yeah, and you just don't get as much information via an online profile, even though, you know, the database that we used was very, very rich and had a lot of pictures, videos, medical history. It's still nonetheless uh, a substitute for meeting somebody in the real world and really getting to know them. So no matter what you choose, whether it is a known egg donor like our friend Judy over here, or anonymous like 
You never four, four, five, six, eight. Don't ever forget it, Dave. Um, no, you really can't go wrong. I mean, even the anonymous eggs, you know, they're very, very heavily screened. Um, if you're working with a reputable agency, obviously, they're, um, often they're going to bring the egg donor in and do psychological screenings and things like that. So with anonymous, it's not like you're just sort of... Uh, Take a chance on me! <laughs> yeah, it's not quite like that. But, uh, you know, so with either case, there's obviously, like we mentioned, pros and cons. And either way, uh, you know, just... For all the egg donors that are out there, just thank you so much for helping families like ourselves be able to sort of have the miracle of you know, Sloan and all the other children that are born out there. You guys are really doing an amazing, wonderful thing. And um, yeah, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.